more important than the tools is the mindset around connecting. I like to do research first, spend a couple hours doing research, make a list of like 20 or 50 people, and then connect with five of them a week, just five, because your intention is to get on the phone with every one of them. That is the most important thing. All the other things, hosting, yes, it's important. Doing video, great. We love it. You know, creator mode, sales navigator, it's all awesome. But all of that stuff is busy work. Welcome to Reinventing Perspectives. Today, we have an amazing guest. We have Karen Yankovic. Thank you so much for being with us, Karen. And I'm so excited about this chat. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Let us know who you are and what's your mission. I'm a marketing strategist. And my mission to go to the other side of that is to help close the gender wage gap and have there be more wealthy women in the world. So the way that I do that is I'm known as a LinkedIn marketing expert. So what I've done is I've incorporated PR into that. And what I do now is I help women really build a strong personal brand, building out a network of people who you know in your life, right? To intentionally build that out, to intentionally build a profitable career, a profitable business, whatever is important to them, and do it in a way that helps them understand. I like to say like flipping the funnel, right? Instead of looking to sell pens, right? We're helping them find a distributor that wants to buy a million of their pens. They're looking for the high-end opportunities first, and then helping them build the kinds of relationships they need to build to get those kinds of opportunities. You say that LinkedIn is not a digital resume. Mm -hmm. It's not that for all the people who think it is. What is it? So, you know, I get that because that's what we thought it was at first, right? I don't know how many years ago it was, but probably 20 at this point. Years ago, we joined LinkedIn. It was a digital resume. It was where you, you know, talked about your job. And if you remember, we also were only connecting with people we knew. Like LinkedIn was like the secret place where we didn't connect with everybody. We were picky about who we connected with. Thankfully, that changed because really it is a brilliant place to build your network. What LinkedIn has done over the years, it has shifted the energy of the platform to help you focus and spotlight your personal brand, not your resume. So I like to say like your resume is all about who you used to be, right? LinkedIn wants you to shine a light on the person that you're becoming, kind of dress for the job you want. Or one of the most recent things they've done is they've rolled out LinkedIn creator mode, which allows people that have blogs or videos or any kind of, even if your creations are physical, like jewelry or artwork, right? It gives us a chance to showcase who we are beyond we know how to use Word and Excel and our expertise is in bookkeeping. When we hear personal brand, especially with social media, we often think of personal brand of Instagram, of TikTok. And then you think, where does LinkedIn fit into all of this? What's the difference to personal brand on LinkedIn? Is there a difference? Or should there be? There is a difference. I use TikTok and Instagram, so I'm not dissing those platforms, but the money and the business for me comes from LinkedIn. And I know lots of people build profitable businesses from those other platforms, so I'm not dismissing that. But I am saying, that what I ask people, where they get the vast majority of their highest paying clients from, almost always the answer is referrals. Almost always. Then that tells me we need to do a better job at building out our networks so we can get more referrals because we can't really make referrals repeatable. We have to wait until they call us. But I've created a process that makes referrals repeatable so that we're meeting more people intentionally, the exact right people that can be giving us more referrals. When I talk about building a brand, like when you're building a brand on TikTok or on Instagram, it's curated with your personality right? With TikTok, it's a lot of video. And with Instagram, it's images and stories and reels and all that other stuff. So there's a lot we can do with all of that. But with LinkedIn, what you're doing is you're showcasing how brilliant you are. You get a chance to tell your story, right? The about section gives you 2,600 characters to tell the world what you want them to know about you. They don't have to watch 10 videos or look at 10 posts and piece it all together. You have the opportunity to create a profile that you can carefully craft so that the world knows exactly what you want them to know about you. LinkedIn is also because it's got the Pulse platform, which is where people write content. They say they're the number one content hub in the world. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what LinkedIn claims. Therefore, when people are searching for the kinds of things that you do, if you carefully craft your LinkedIn profile using those kinds of keywords, using the things that people are searching for that you want to come up for, then it's going to come up if you do that on LinkedIn. You can't do that on those other platforms. For example, let's say you are a wealth coach for millennials, right? If you use those words very intentionally in your LinkedIn profile 
on your content and the things you're doing on LinkedIn. When people go to LinkedIn and let's say you're a speaker and they're looking for a speaker for their next event that they want to pay $10,000 to, but they're looking for somebody that focuses on wealth coaching for millennials, somebody's profile is going to come up, right? Why not yours? Listen, mine's not going to come up because all my competitors know how to do this, but yours don't. So if you do this work and really craft a profile that creates a brand for you that it, not only when people look at it, they say, wow, I really need to know her, but also is found because you've crafted it on the back end, right? Behind the scenes, you've done a lot of work with keywords and you know strategically where to put them all. You're now being found. I don't want you to wait for that to happen. I want you to use LinkedIn to go out and meet people. But at the same time, let's not leave any money on the table. So when we talk about a personal brand on LinkedIn, I think it's very different than a personal brand on Instagram and TikTok from that perspective. You've talked about building your network. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, even physical networking events are sort of like, why did I go? I mean, I got absolutely nothing out of it. Right. So now bring it into the virtual space and into LinkedIn. How can people network effectively? Oh, we could talk about this for two hours. But let me just say this. When you go to a physical networking event, there's a room full of people and you wouldn't be there if you didn't think somebody in there would be valuable to your business. And this is important. When you go to a business networking event, you know that everyone in the room is there for business, right? So it's okay to talk about your business, but you don't walk up to people and go say, Hey, I'm Karen, buy my stuff. Give me your credit card. You go up to them and you warm it up and you talk a little bit about what you do. What I love to do in physical events is just say, yeah, I'm Karen. I teach marketing. I focus on LinkedIn networking. And then the next day, connect with them all on LinkedIn. So they look at my profile and go, wow, I really need to know her, right? Like I like to go low key in the physical events and then wow them the next day when they see my profile. Taking that same concept to LinkedIn, and this is another place that it's different from Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok, there's a lot of reasons to be there. The only reason people are on LinkedIn is to grow their business or to grow their career, right? To build a career. So it's okay to be talking about your products and services and your expertise and shining a light on your genius. I really believe it is the preeminent virtual networking opportunity. And when has that ever been more important than the last few years. We've now learned that virtual networking works that virtual events can be valuable. And I think a lot of that's not going away. Obviously, we're looking at whatever the next chapter of the world is, and we don't really know what that's going to look like yet. But what I do think, and I believe this wholeheartedly, is that the virtual is not going away. So when you walk into a regular networking event, you can't sit there with your phone and be like, let me look this person up. But if you're in a virtual networking event, you can, right? You can be sitting there, you can be pulling up their LinkedIn profiles. And by the way, they're pulling up yours, right? So if you go into your LinkedIn strategy with the same mindset that you would go into a business networking event, that's where the power starts to happen. And I just want to say this, Priscilla, and this is so important. I got asked a couple years ago, I was doing a talk in an in-person event and somebody stood up and went like, this is great. Lots of good information. Boil this down to one thing. What one thing should I do when I leave this room? I really, really, really wanted to say, you got to do your profile because without the profile done, you're leaving so much money on the table. But a gorgeous profile that nobody sees is like a beautiful flyer nailed to a tree in the middle of the forest. The one thing really is do that networking, build your network, build relationships, think about the people on a micro-targeted level. I'm not talking about the people that spam you with requests and all that buy my stuff things. But if you belong to networking groups, if you belong to even Facebook groups that are full of people that you think could be valuable, there's some business happening there, cherry pick through those groups, start to meet these people, start to, again, if you're doing this from a strong profile, it's even more impactful, but use LinkedIn to build your network as a powerful virtual networking tool. And again, one more thing on this, because I could talk about this forever, but like taking in person, I guess this works for virtual also to another level. Let's say you're going to a conference and you've been there. I've been there. You go to conferences. It's a whirlwind. There's all these people at your table. There's all these speakers and you're in and out and there's booths and all this stuff. And sometimes you leave and you're like, what the heck just happened? Right. But if you take some time before that conference and look at the list of speakers and connect with them on LinkedIn and say, I'm really looking forward to seeing your talk tomorrow at the ABC conference. People don't do this. Now, when you go there and if you get a chance to introduce yourself to the speaker, you're building actual powerful relationships with typically the most impactful people at the conference. If you are connecting with the conference organizers, if you are connecting with other people that are going to the conference, it's just a great way to maximize what you're going to be doing anyway. So taking that same concept that virtual networking concept and meshing it. And again, you can do this with virtual conferences also. Meshing it with a strong LinkedIn strategy. This is how we can micro-target and build our network full of the most impactful people in our industry. Just a quick ask. If you're finding this information helpful, please share it with someone that you know would love this conversation and would find this information beneficial. Thank you again for listening in. And 
Let's jump back into our conversation. I know that you say that there are three categories of people that you should be growing relationships with. I love that you asked this question. Okay, so I've already hopefully established the importance of continuing to build out your network. So there's three different types of categories of people that when I work with people, we focus on. Obviously, we want to focus on people that might be able to give us their credit card, whatever that looks like for you. But I don't ever want to be those people that say, here's what I do, give me your credit card. If somebody reaches out to me, of course. And, you know, again, let's use like an in-person networking event. Let's say you belong to a chamber of commerce. Let's say there's a directory for the chamber, right? You might want to look through that directory and cherry pick 20 people that you want to connect with on LinkedIn because you think they might be able to buy your stuff, but you don't want to start the conversations with, hey, here's what I do. And I think this is perfect for you. You should invest in this. What I like to do is put them in the second category. And the second category, which I think is one of the most impactful things is people who know people who know people. So taking those same conversations. Now, remember, if you did your research right, maybe these 20 people from that chamber directory might be good candidates for you to be a part of whatever you offer. But the conversations are, hey, we're both members of this chamber. I really want to get to know more people. I want to really make the time I spend in the investment I made in this chamber. I want to maximize it. I'd love to know more about you and what you join the chamber. Like, you know, how do you help people? And then when it comes around to you, you're going to say, okay, here's what I do. Who do you know? So instead of here's what I do, give me your credit card. You want to focus on the audience where you can say, here's what I do. Who do you know? Now, if you did your research right, hopefully a good percentage of those people might say, well, maybe me, right? But the category really is who do you know? So for example, like I serve audiences of women primarily. Like there might be people that teach money strategies for women. That's a great person for me to meet because they can introduce me to their people. Think about who else serves your audience and look to build your network full of those kinds of people. And then the third category. And this is something that everybody overlooks and almost everybody feels they're not ready for. But I honestly think this is almost the first thing you should be doing when you're starting your career and starting your business. And that is build relationships with the journalists in your industry that talk or write about what you do. Like this right here, Priscilla. For somebody that's listening to this, if I met you in the back of an Uber and I said, hey, I teach LinkedIn marketing for women, you'd be like, okay, yeah, that's cool, whatever. But because Priscilla's interviewing me, I get to borrow a little bit of her credibility. You're listening to Priscilla. You have confidence that she brings people work worthy of her time and your time to you, I get to borrow her credibility and it puts me in front of hundreds, thousands, you know, maybe millions, depending on who these people are, of the people in your audience. And the more you do these kinds of interviews, the more you get. Priscilla, just as an example, about an hour after we do this record, I'm being interviewed for a local television business segment. I have no idea how they found me, but I'm very visible from a media perspective. I live in New Jersey. So I build relationships with the journalists in the area. I go to the New Jersey online business magazines, I make sure I build relationships with the journalists that write about business in the state that I live in. My business is worldwide. I don't have to stick to New Jersey, but it's kind of cool when you're local. Remember that I said that you can do this when you start your business. So many people that I speak with, let's say they've been in corporate attorneys and whatever, and they just decided that it's not for them. And they really want to go out on their own, especially post COVID. So many women, so many people are doing this, the great realignment or whatever they're calling it now, right? It's the great reshuffling, the great resignation. They're not coming to this new chapter of their life with no experience, they're coming to it with a lot of expertise. They just don't have years of experience and recommendations as a coach or a consultant, but they have the expertise. So if while you're building your business and while you're building your book of recommendations and testimonials, you're also getting featured in newspapers and magazines and podcasts, that's giving you the credibility to help you land those high paying clients while you're building your business. So you don't have to wait until you feel like you're ready for publicity. You can start doing that today and LinkedIn gives us the ability to do it at no cost. We don't have to hire a $10,000 publicist to do this. So to me, for my business and for most of my students, those second two categories are the ones that bring in the most business. Even though you feel like on LinkedIn, we should be going straight for the business. If you build relationships with intention, with those second two categories, the business follows every single time. Karen, I like that you talked about people having that mindset of, oh, I'm not ready, or I first need to, you know, quote unquote, be somebody before. Before I right. reach out to these people, right. mm -hmm. how do you talk them, mentor them through those mindset issues? Yeah. yeah. It's important, Priscilla. Honestly, it's a big part of all the work that I do. I have a group of programs, our She's Linked Up family of programs. We've got a couple different programs in there for every different level. And every single thing I do has a mindset component because so many women that come to me have these beautiful ambitions. I want a half million dollar business. I want to retire my husband. I want to be home when my kids get off the bus at three o'clock. I want to be able to be flexible because my parents might need my support, right? We have these beautiful ambitions, but our 
energy doesn't match them. So if our energy is still in the, I can't charge that much money or I can't do this, we're never going to hit. I mean, it's like New Year's resolutions, right? Nobody ever achieves their New Year's resolutions because we do it because it's New Year's. So I think that the mindset component actually is a big part of what we do. As a matter of fact, part of the work we do is we write LinkedIn profiles. And so often when we write the profile, these women are like, oh, I don't know if I can say that about myself. I'm not ready to push publish on that yet because they have to get comfortable with it first. I'm okay with that. But I really believe that if you don't feel a little queasy when you're hitting publish on your LinkedIn profile, then you haven't been strong enough in telling the world how great you are. So the mindset piece is important. There's so many tools, there's so many ways to do this, but it really starts with us for entrepreneurs, especially, and this happened to me. So this is like firsthand experience. I had a job that I was making really good money at, had tons of time off, very secure job. I hated every minute of it. And it was a really long commute. And I knew that I was leaving and I was building this business now while I was doing that. I've had entrepreneurial endeavors my whole life, but for a period of time when my kids were in middle school and high school, I was working full time. And my family are all teachers. They did not understand me quitting my job. I don't think they still understand what I do. They love me and they support me. So a lot of entrepreneurs, when we're doing this, especially if it's post COVID, you're just like, I just can't go back into the office. There's probably people in your life saying, suck it up, buttercup and go into the office. Cause that's what we do. Right? So you're hearing that yet, you know, somewhere that there's an opportunity that, you know, you're ready for. Not only do we have our own gremlins that we have to overcome, we've got all these other people that love us and support us that don't understand us. Right? So it's a big piece of the work that we all need to do. I will be a student of mindset until the day that I die. At every level, when you go from $10 an hour to $50 an hour, there's a mindset. 50 to 100, 100 to a million, right? There's mindset at every step of the way. And when I'm talking about shining a light on your personal brand, I'm not only saying I want you to sell these 50K packages or 5K packages or 2K packages, and you got to tell the world you're brilliant at it. And women, especially of my generation, we were told from the time we were young, don't brag, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm saying, no, no, no. No one's going to think you're better than you say you are. There's a lot to unpack pack with mindset. I guess the real point here is accept it. Know that it's never going to be over. You're not going to ever be done with mindset and just do what you got to do. And the better you get at it, the more you hear yourself. The words will come out of your mouth and you'll be like, did I just say that again? You know, and I got to stop saying that. The better you get at it, the more you'll catch yourself. But there are still always going to be times where you've got to do the hard work around mindset. And that's just, I guess it's systemic. I don't know what it is that brought primarily women to this place where we have to fight so hard, you know, to have a strong, positive mindset. But it is what it is. Since we've been talking about you working on your mindset and people needing to do this work continuously, is there a book that you'd say kind of helped you shift at some point in time? Priscilla, I, I am the queen of buying books. I have so many books. So Lisa Tosti has a book. It's called Hustle and Flow. She talks about understanding and accepting the masculine and feminine, that there's a little bit of hustle, but there's a little bit of just letting go and letting it flow. I've actually worked personally with Lisa and I love her book and her work. There's one called Letting Go. I can't think of his name, but it's a big one. It's basically saying like, give it up, give it up, stop trying to control this stuff. And it's hard, especially for somebody like me, who's got a lot of reasons why I think things need to be done a certain way. For me, that's my biggest mindset challenge. One of the things Lisa used to say to me when I'd get all up on my head was, did you go to the beach today? Go to the beach, go for a walk on the beach. I'm like, I can't go to the beach. I got to do this and this and this. And she's like, stop, drop everything. Time and time again, when I do that, that's where I see the opportunities happen. Or that's when my brain stops thinking and I come up with these great ideas, right? And I'm always going to be reading them. I'm always looking for more. So anybody that's listening to this, if there's a book you think I should know about, connect with me on LinkedIn and tell me what book I should read because I always want to find new ones. LinkedIn has made so many changes for people to be able to use the platform well for PR and for connecting. But a lot of people don't know the tools. I mentioned it before. I think if you are entrepreneurial at all, even if you're in sales, if your income is based on the network you build, I do think that LinkedIn creator mode is something that that we all should be changing our profile to. And that's free. There's a section that says resources and there's a toggle that you toggle to. So I have a podcast called Good Girls Get Rich. And I did a whole episode, I think it was 202, about LinkedIn creator mode. It's just, there's so much value to using that. I would absolutely look at that. I think what we need to do first is embrace it. There's a lot of tools. If you go to my YouTube channel, I just did a whole, in the summer of 22, I did a whole video series of summer strategy where I talked about a lot of the different tools on LinkedIn. I went live a couple times a week. So you can check some things out there. But I think more important than the tools is the mindset around connecting. And I'm not saying a million. If you use like LinkedIn search tools and you dive into things like the chamber that you belong to, or maybe even a Facebook group or a business group you belong to, I like to do research first, spend a couple hours doing research, make a list of like 20 or 50 people, and then connect with five of them a week. 
just five because your intention is to get on the phone with every one of them. That is the most important thing. All the other things, posting, yes, it's important. Doing video, great, we love it. Creator mode, sales navigator, it's all awesome. But all of that stuff is busy work. The hard stuff, but the most impactful stuff is building relationships with the intention of actually having a conversation. That's where all the change happens. Not because you use a little bell that curates your feed, even though I love the little bell that curates your feed. I love that you said that because that's exactly what people avoid doing. Everyone exactly. wants to do everything but talk to people. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Listen, I'm trying to embrace even like being okay with people wanting to have conversations in the DMs. I recognize it in some ways as a generational thing that people just don't want to get on the phone, but I still want to get on the phone with people because I do think that that's where people invest in you when they've talked to you. That's where this is powerful. There's a million great tools on LinkedIn and I would love to share them all with you. And if you're really going to use LinkedIn, then the goal there would be to land contracts, to have a contract sign, to build solid leads. And that happens when you build your network, not from all the fun features LinkedIn has. Tell us more about your podcast because when I saw the name, I was going to ask you about this. I was like, good mm -hmm. girls get rich. I don't think the story is as exciting as it might be. But basically what I believe is that when you shine a light on what you're good at, that's where the abundance comes into our life. And again, as women, like I remember a friend of mine, really, really good cook. I happen to be a really good cook, but I don't have time to cook. And I'd say to her, can you please just cook for me? I will pay you. Just bring me meals. And she's like, that's ridiculous. You know how to cook. She didn't feel that her skill of cooking was worthy because it came so easy to her. And I think that as women, a lot of us do that. We're so good at this. We just give it away because we're good at it. Yeah, I'll jump on the phone with you for a half hour. No problem. And we talk to people and we don't understand the value of building a business around the things we love to do the most, right? So I think that when we stop listening to what other people say we need to be doing and we start identifying who is it that we love to talk to, what is our greatest skill and how do we build a business around that? That is where the abundance comes into our life. And abundance can be seen as many different things, right? But if we're talking about money, right, that's where richness comes in. Even richness can be looked at many things. So that's really where it comes from. I really want to inspire women to understand that you don't have to do the things you hate to have abundance come into your life. I wish I knew this 30 years ago. I mean, I don't live in regrets, but if you build your business around doing what you love to do, you are naturally going to be enthusiastic about it. You are going to be attracting people to your energy. And that's what the podcast is about. How do you continue to build a brand around yourself that allows you you to do what you love and become very wealthy at the same time. What's your favorite or most impactful thing on LinkedIn? People talk about the newsletter or people talk about going live or people talk about posting content. People talk about so many things, but from your experience. Yeah. So all of that stuff is great. All of that stuff is important. The most impactful thing, newsletters is a new thing that came out that's great. And by the way, you have to be in creator mode to be able to write a newsletter. So another good reason to have creator mode. Creator mode might be the most impactful thing that's come out recently. It's just giving us so many tools. In fact, in the early days of Clubhouse, LinkedIn spent a lot of time on Clubhouse asking people what they wanted. And they would bring people on the stage and you could talk directly to the people developing things. Then they came back and did it. When I say things like creating a profile full of keywords, when you have creator mode, LinkedIn even says, and give us five hashtags that you want to be known for because we want to know exactly when to send people to you, right? So they're understanding that we want to be found and they're giving us the opportunity to tell them. So again, I think as an entrepreneur, we must be using creator mode. The other thing that is most impactful, and this isn't really a LinkedIn tool, but I I think it's something we all overlook. It's our existing network. You've already probably got anywhere from 100 to 5,000 people you're already connected to. And everybody's looking to connect with the next person, the next person, the next person. And when I say this to people, they're like, well, I know everybody in my network. Until I get on Zoom with them and I make them look. And then when they look like, oh, well, this person just changed jobs. I didn't know they changed jobs. Wow, this new role she's in might be really valuable, right? So whatever you've done, if it's hardly anything or a ton of work, for some reason, we overlook that as we build out our strategy. The first thing I I want you to do is go back and look at the network that LinkedIn has delivered to you over the last five or 10 years and see who in there you haven't talked to in a while that you think would be great to buy coffee to or have a virtual coffee with. There's an unbelievable amount of low hanging fruit there. And I can tell you, if you're listening to this, you're going, yeah, not mine. Look anyway, look anyway, because I bet you're wrong. Absolutely excited about LinkedIn from just talking to you. My last question is always, what has faith meant to you on your journey? You know, that ties a lot into the mindset stuff for me, Priscilla. First of all, 
I have to have faith in myself, right? Which is where the biggest disconnects are. But I also have to have faith in how I'm being guided. And I have to have faith that I was put here to do this work, right? So to me, that's where faith really comes to play in my business. I do believe, especially as we watch things in the world that might be going crazy, I have to believe that I was put on this planet to help inspire women to become wealthy women so that they have the money to make the change in the world that they want to make. And I think a lot of that, I have to have faith that I was put here for that, right? That's my concept contribution that I feel like I make to the world. Faith is such an important word, I think, in my work. And I think it probably needs to be a bigger word in many people's work. Thank you so much for that, Karen. To our audience, please go to karenyankovic.com slash masterclass. I'm going to have that in the show notes. Karen, please tell them what they have lined up for them on this masterclass. The masterclass really talks about all the things we've talked about here. We really go into the PR piece as well and how you build relationships with that. You know, my goal is to inspire you to use it because I can give you a whole masterclass on how to do your profile, but you've probably had update your profile on your to-do list for a long time, right? I want to make sure that you understand the power of this and how much money you're leaving on the table if you don't use this. We're not selling anything on this masterclass. It is just pure content. If you want to learn more from that workshop, we show you how to book a call with somebody and to get some information, but it's just pure content. And we're teaching an overview of the process that we teach with or without us. We can accelerate it if you want some help, but with or without us, it's a powerful, powerful process. But I I'd also love for you to connect with me on LinkedIn and tell me that you heard me on this show and let me know what you thought and give Priscilla some reviews and let her know what you thought about this episode, what you learned from it. This is how we lift each other up, right? This is the goal of helping women help women or people help people. So connect with me on LinkedIn. Let me know what you thought. Leave Priscilla some reviews, connect with her. Let's see what we can do to help each other. Have an amazing year ahead. Thank you so much for that, Karen. And thank you for your time. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. I hope you got a lot of information, a lot of actionable things out of these episodes. Please, two huge favors from you. Please let us know what kind of things you'd like to hear. And if you really love the episode, please support us by going and leaving a review in your podcast listening app. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with the Reinventing Perspectives podcast. We value you. See you again next week. Mm-hmm.